Sure. Um, both um, Elliot and Coach Downing said that this practice has been different. This offseason leading to it has been different. Have you seen a difference, and what has been that change? Uh, I see the difference every day. Uh, the guys around the building, they're staying together to get with each other. They're having fun. They're enjoying the work and they're more process-based. You know, the results are coming. I just see that's the part I see right away. I just, my group, I see every group throughout the day, you just see people having fun, enjoying it, and spending as much time as they can here. Uh, so that's the difference I noticed right away. And having a guy like Antonio Clary back and healthy in spring, how much does he add to that secondary group? Uh, I just think from who he is as a person, he's always a great leader. Uh, he's helped us in that, that sense, but I think collectively as a group, uh, it's probably the closest we've been. I'm proud of them. They're uh, enjoying each other's time. They're enjoying doing the work. Uh, they're preparing. And he's, he's been a good role, role model for the guys, kind of just showing them the way, you know, and just saying, hey, he doesn't need to talk. He's just doing it. And every day he's doing it over and over and over again. And then kind of they're following now because they see that his success. Last year, it could have been very frustrating for him having high hopes coming into the season and being injured. How much have you seen him mature and grow and maybe be kind of like a coach to these guys? Um, Yes, unfortunately he got injured. And, you know, we, we kind of told him that if you trust, you know, the Lord doesn't make mistakes. And, you know, there's a reason for this. And he's kind of taking that approach. And then now, you know, he's not taking anything for granted. If there's a detail that he, he would have before in the past overlooked, now it's like, hey, if I came back, I came back with a purpose. And that's what I've noticed is his attention to detail and not looking the other way and holding everybody accountable. And during the offseason, too, you added a lot to your room. Uh, a couple guys from the transfer portal, including like Kempton Shine. How much have you seen from those guys? What's kind of been standing out from those guys you brought in? Uh, chemistry, investment, passion. Uh, you know, our, our motto is really just kind of we're just m master the mundane and just the detail of every day, just doing the things that no one wants to do, whether that's getting here early, whether that's doing extra treatment, um, just the investment in himself to just be the best person every day. And I think that collectively is shown as a unit. Um, and I, I see it every day and just that day's over now tomorrow chase that excellence and it's, it's been fun to be around and I, I'm lucky to work with guys like that. One of the traits you look at with DB is a, a guy that's versatile. Um, have you guys been kind of switching guys around? Uh, maybe like Malcolm has he gone to, you know, has he been at safety or just still a corner? Kind of, kind of see like any movement there? It'll come eventually. Right now just early on just letting guys get settled but also just depth wise we really don't have that luxury right now. Um, we got a lot of guys just, you know, doing a great job laying it down for their teammates. You know, you got some guys taking six to eight reps straight. Just, you know, guys have class and we're going to focus on being scholars. So they may have to go to class next man up. Uh, you know, someone may have gotten nicked up. That's going to happen. Hey, all right, I'll move over and take double reps. So over time, we will. It's early. Um, and it's glad that they've had the ability to learn and get that opportunity. But right now, we just don't have that luxury with the depth. Thank you. Hey, Carol. Uh, hey, Greg. With, with a lot of those those transfer guys, how much are you using this spring to just figure out exactly what you have versus teaching the defense versus teaching fundamentals? How do you kind of strike that balance so so you know exactly what you got by the time spring practice is, is, is finished? Just honestly, the guys invest so much every day. I just get to focus on the fundamentals and coaching the character and just the habits of just trying to teeth the quit out of them and like every day they're challenging themselves so the scheme is the scheme those guys have played football that's the benefit people don't realize that no matter where you're at the opportunity to play reps and get that experience it brings so much more confidence in the guys I don't have to focus on that and I never will um, it's just the fundamentals of every day doing the things that no one else wants to do urgency to get lined up if I have an opportunity to do something fast do that and then if there's a chance to embrace the heart embrace that and, and it's been easy because they've done that piece and now it's the we don't talk about the what, really, honestly. We talk about the why. They can give me all those answers of why they're doing it, and that's why they're able to process the scheme, because they understand the whys. When you bring in, I guess, the, the grad transfer types, Kendrin and uh, Kempton, how much easier is, is that aspect? Because they, they played a lot of football. Each of them have more than 40 starts in their career. Uh, how, how, how important is that? Uh, it, to me, bringing in them is no different than bringing in Ethan Mentor. It's, they've played football, they've played video games, they've played high school, cover three is cover three. You call it Apple, we may call it something different. It's me as a coach, as a teacher, translating the language. That's what's on us, to tell them that, hey, you already know it, let me simplify it for you. So that's been good. What's helped is that what they've done is they, they've literally, are those guys that are literally just investing and they're in there every day talking to each other and just figuring out the differences. 
So it's, it's been it's been good, honestly. You guys have Clary playing the strong safety, the spur. Uh, where, where do you have from that to the start? Uh, he's been at the strong safety. Gotcha. Yes, sir. Gotcha. And, and, and Jack, you mentioned Malcolm. I, I thought I saw him with the safeties today. Is he, is he somebody that could do both? Yes, he could. I'll be honest, it's probably a majority, almost half the group could probably play both if we came down to it. You know, that, that's a testament to them and there's kind of the body of work they have and just their hip mobility and their flexibility and stuff like that. And then their knowledge, they have be able to process it at a high level. And, and on Malcolm, he's a guy that, that played uh, some corner for, for you guys last year off the bench mostly. Have you seen him develop and, and what could a you know, second season in the defense do for him uh, having, having played in it for, for a full year? The passion that Malcolm brings day in and day out, it, it's awesome. The fact that he brings that to us has just really helped. He's been focused on that. You know, when we're on the road, you get calls, man, I don't know what's going on. You know, when people see people doing things different and the small things every day, it scares people because that's what it takes, that work ethic. So he brings that and he's been back on that. And, you know, I, I truly believe that that preparation is not going to guarantee the results for him, but it'll, grow, it'll guarantee he's grown. And I've seen him grown year two in his system just and also as a person um, and also as a student. I mean, the kid's knocking out in the classroom as well. So it's a testament to his growth from all his preparation he's doing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Karun, just wanted to ask, you know, they talked so much about the transfers. What qualities were y'all looking for with such a large group coming in? What were you looking for? And how, how do you feel these guys kind of fit into that? Um, you know, UVA is a special, unique place. First, it starts with character. You know, second, it starts with academics. And then three, we have such special kids here anyway. So we want to make sure it's the right opportunity for them. And, you know, our students here are more important. So we need our students to be a mess, a mess with what they are. Um, for us, we've been fortunate. A lot of guys we've taken this time, we knew directly someone on each staff. And they were able to tell us who that person was academically. So we were able to be as fast as that process happens, a little bit more thorough. And, you know, for us, again, we're always going to be inside out. So we're always going to build here first and then add those pieces. But we knew every kid we knew whether it was the coach, whether it was the head coach, we had a personal relationship, which helped a lot with that process. You know, heading into year three now, do you feel like the secondary is kind of more reflective of kind of how you and Coach Rudd and obviously Coach Elliott too is kind of wants it to be? I would like to say yes, but honestly, I'm a reflection of them. They, they've actually helped me grow. I mean, they're inspiring. You, I wish you guys could see it in the work, the way they're working and the way they're having fun and the way they're together. Uh, it's kind of how it should be. And I hope that they're setting that standard for the brand and kind of every day, it's, you know, we give them a marker to start to meet and sign your name on it. And that's who you are every day. And so I tell them every day, you know, when you put it out there, that's my resume. So just kind of trust me. And I trust you. But, you know, I'm learning from them. And I hope it's always should be that way as a coach. They're helping you grow. And it's been fun. And last one for me is just how it's kind of crazy that Jonas is going into his, his fourth year now. Just what have you seen from him as he kind of stepped into and kind of owned that leadership role in the spring? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, everybody says it sounds cliche. It doesn't matter if it comes from a coach, but there's the little things. If they didn't look a ball in during Indy, no, that's not right. That's not our standard. Let's go again. It's the, it's so hard in today's society to be, be that person that speaks out in conflict. You know, everyone wants the guy that's a good player, but it's the one that's kind of holding your teammates accountable because you know that's not the standard. And so he's doing a lot more of that, being more vocal in those roles and kind of just holding guys accountable and collectively spending more time in this building. Uh, it, it, the techniques are the techniques. He's learning football. He's having fun. He's working extra in the weight room. I mean, and it's just correlating and giving him more confidence. And then it, he's playing really high level football right now. So I'm excited and I'm, I'm proud of him. Uh, Corey Thomas is such an intriguing guy coming from the from transfer portal. He, he can do so many different roles. What intrigued you when you watched the film, and what have you seen some of him so far in the spring? Well, I wish I was him. I'll tell you that much when I was back in college. Just he has the length. He has the knowledge. I mean, he has the fundamentals, and he's very humble. He's going to work at it. You know, just in all the feedback from all his coaches that I knew there uh, at his prior place was, just his, he just wants to be so good and every day he just wants to be better and I, I could work with a kid like that and it's I mean it's showing off early on just honestly just just playing fast playing hard and it's, it's kind of just making plays and that's what it's all about production finish on the ball
just to follow up on something Preston asked you about in terms of knowing uh, the, the past coaches that, that some of the transfers have played for. I think it was Kendrick who told me uh, his coach, and you, you had coached at Maryland. Yep. So does he come to you kind of looking exactly like the, the owner you would want in terms of technique, approach, uh, that kind of thing, since he probably had some, some similar training in the past, or is it different? Yeah, I mean, let's, let's, let's look at what he's accomplished. He's graduated from UPenn with a great degree. That tells me that that's someone that's willing to work, someone that has a discipline, and someone that has a process. That's a recipe for success, regardless of the football piece, and it's just showing why he's translated so fast to being here. You know, he, he's that two percenter that we talk about all the time in our room. It's just being that two percenter, and that that piece of it's allowed him to have his success. And now it's just kind of honing up on those details because you go up to a level of competition. You know, he's got to just go ahead and now focus on those small things, and then everything else will be good. Then last, last one for me. Um, what's it been like working with Mark Adams, your, your new linebackers coach on staff? I know it's a short time he's been here, but uh, what, what's it been like uh, working with him? I love guys that have a great knowledge and just sitting back, listening, learning, uh, super smart. And just like we talk about the players, it's the same with the coaches. He knows our defense. We just sit up and talk, hey, you called it this word, we call it that word. He's a great coach, detail oriented. Um, obviously, no one's going to be coach sent him, but at the end of the day, he's his best version of him and we're enjoying having him. And, you know, together as a unit, I think collectively as a defense, we're, we're tight and we're moving forward. And we're all on the same page and it's been good for us.